Today we'll make this hat using crochet skills. So all you need to know is how to crochet. You don't need to even know how to knit. And we will be doing only the knit stitch. We are not going to be purling. And we're going to have this one just using our basic supplies knitting needles, crochet hooks of course. So the hat will be starting with crocheting, we'll crochet the brim and then we'll transition into knitting and it will be so easy. So even if you've never knitted before and you know only how to crochet, you're gonna be able to make this one. I believe in you guys. Give it a try and then you can transition into knitting just fine after this. All right, let's get started. We'll start with a slip knot and a chain of about 21 inches or the length you want your your hat to be or you measure it on your head or you can check here in the corner I'll leave a chart with different hat sizes and suggested hat sizes as well so you just keep doing that chain for about I'll do it for about 21 inches because that's how big my head is once you reach the end of your chain we'll chain two and this will count as the first double crochet then yarn over and we'll do double crochets starting from the third chain from the hook till the end of the row and no skipping no anything we'll just do double crochets and then we will connect to the beginning over here so we can have a full circle and we're going to use the tail to tie that we'll decide on the second row when we do our ribbing do we have enough or and we can cheat of course over there and we'll just make it work so no counting no anything just have fun after finishing that row we're gonna go back to the beginning and then we'll have this tail here pointing towards the floor and we will be making into a circle now so we'll go into the chain here at the top we'll do a slip stitch making sure you do not twist your foundation row and then we'll go into that first stitch and we'll do a slip stitch into it and now we'll be ready to make our chain and then into the next stitch here we have we will do a front post double crochet and into the next stitch we'll do a back post double crochet in this way we'll be creating a ribbing so the next stitch will be front post again and the back stitch will be a back post we'll just go into the back and we'll use that tail we'll use that base chain and we'll do a few chains it's a good idea to leave that tail a little bit longer and those few chains will make quite a secure knot here and then you can weave it in inside your hat and you can of course get a needle and do it even better but we'll go just like this back post and front post both sides will look the same till we reach the end and then in the next row we'll do the same thing the front post will get a front post the back post will get a back post and I'll meet you there so now that I reach the end I will go into my chain and I will do a slip stitch here and I'll chain two again for the first double crochet and I'm looking at my next stitch my next stitch is a front post so I'll go through the front front post double crochet and now my next stitch is a back post here so I'll go through the back post for the next stitch and again I'll go through the front and I'm just gonna follow whatever the stitch is telling me what to do and I'll do this for a total of five rows so now that we are done with our brim of the hat, we'll do we'll start knitting the top. And knitting as a crochet is very easy. That knit stitch is so close to that holding the crochet hook and the knitting needle is almost the same. So I thought any crocheter can knit that hat as long as you have the brim done. Because you don't need to know how to purl, you just need to know how to knit. So now I got my next color and I also got a, a set of knitting needles with a cable since we're gonna be going in a circle we'll be working the round we'll need a this type of needles the label of my yarn recommends 5.5 you can get a measuring gauge measuring tool here for your knitting needles 
and also you can check your label the labels usually tell you what um, what size is your knitting needle or they might have a little writing here on the side most of them don't and if you lost the label like i already did already here i'm just using my tool and of course this is the recommended size but you can always go up and down depending on what effect you want to achieve so we're going to start with our yarn the next color and i will start with a slip knot just the way we do in crochet and then i will pick just one stitch random closer to the beginning and end here and i will just crochet one stitch so i can tighten my knot here and this is my first stitch so it's done it's ready for my knitting needles but i'll do a few more and i will just insert the hook my hook and just draw a loop through every stitch there we go and that's it i'll just draw a loop and now that i have few loops on my crochet hook i'll just go to the back of it so it help it helps if you have a regular crochet hook without any handle or plastic pieces on it so you can just slide your stitches from here and there we are so we keep our needle on the side you can also do this with the needle as well you don't need a crochet hook you hold your yarn just the way you hold when crocheting and you just draw a loop just draw a loop and if you pay attention here those legs of those loops they face a different way we're gonna fix that in that first row we're gonna do so we just keep going just like this or with your crochet hook as well if you don't have a crochet hook that's just metal you can just draw a few hold them and just use your needle to go through them or you just do them one at a time like this as well so it's whatever works for you use your crocheting skills to knit And we'll just go just like this around so this is how it looks once we are done and now we will be knitting our first row and since we have a longer cable than the one we need we're just gonna pull it out and then we'll work with it and we'll just be moving our stitches to the other side. So grab your working yarn and wrap it around your hand just like you do in crochet, the way it's more comfortable. You can wrap it a few times around your finger. It depends how you feel comfortable with it. I like keeping it my a little bit closer to the knitting so I don't have to spend so much energy on pulling that yarn. So now that you see that those stitches, when you they're facing just like this so this is the right foot and this is the left foot of your stitch and we want to be going through that right foot when it's being in the back so we don't twist it otherwise it will look twisted like this and we don't want this effect right now so we're just gonna go through that stitch and we're gonna be grabbing the working yarn and that's how we knit and I think it's doable by any crocheter. There we have three. Over here, we have a twisted stitch. So we're just gonna untwist it. So the right foot is in the back and the left foot is in the front and there's actually space here. And we'll be going through that little tunnel. And we have five stitches so far. And we'll be doing just like this till the end of the round. If, even if it's in the front, we're just gonna go inside through it or you can put it on your hook and you can untwist it and knit it then. So you can either go through that and pick up your stitch, just stretching your stitch a little bit or you can untwist it on your hook and then work it. And here again, we'll be working through that little tunnel so here your tunnel is work is looking this way we're just gonna switch it 
if you go through the back here and you pick your yarn from here look how your stitch will look it will look twisted and we don't want that right now so we're just gonna untwist and then we're gonna knit and this is the only stitch you will be doing for the whole hat once you have enough stitches here and you need that cable to go you just pull your cable through it and then you can start all over again make sure that that stitch here is not stretched too much so it matches the rest of them and we keep going and you can also put a marker here at that, the beginning of the row we started over here that's really not important since we are not doing anything special but if you would like that this is a place to put that one so I'm here almost at the end so I'll get my last two stitches here then I'll just move my marker to the right needle and I'll start again and now because when you crochet it has a little bit more bulk but when you knit you need more stitches on the top every five stitches I'll be increasing otherwise that hat gets too tight but if you want a tighter hat it's okay to go without increasing but I just wanted to show you that option as well in case you, you don't like the hat being so tight around so counting five stitches and now all my stitches are the right foot is in the front so I'll be just going through the front of this right foot otherwise you can still go ahead and you can still move them and untwist your stitch but it takes too much energy so we're just gonna go through the front of your stitch and we'll be just knitting just like this all right let's see oh, we have six stitches now so now that you have five stitches here we'll be increasing so you can use your crochet hook to pick up that and twist it on your hook and then knit it and now you have an increase here that's almost invisible or you can do it another way too we have one two three four five and then over here you just get your working yarn and you literally twist a loop and that's it but this might create a little hole so working with the, the th pulling the thread from the middle sometimes works better but that's another way two three four five in here you can pull that little space between your stitches and then you just twist it around your needle just twist it one more time and now it's really twisted well and then you can knit just the way you do it And here how it looks and we keep doing that for the whole hat so we can have extra stitches at the top and you can do this for about six inches and then we're gonna start decreasing so the decreasing takes about two to three inches so you can you can leave that much for the decreasing part and I'll meet you when it's time to decrease the next rows we're not going to have increases anymore you're just going to be knitting just like this in the round moving that marker each row up so i went ahead and i did a little pattern here and that's uh, three stitches one from a different color three one and then on the one stitch i did three stitches from different colors and then two rounds of just the second color and then this one is one yellow one purple one yellow one purple just switching the colors and that's how they look in the back and this is how it looks in the back when we did that first row so now it's time to decrease get your stitch markers so we can mark the places where we're gonna decrease so starting from the beginning so here is my beginning marker i'll count 10 and then i'll put a stitch marker here i'll be decreasing every 10 stitches so two four six eight ten then i'll count ten again and i'll put my marker all the way around 
So I'll be decreasing after each marker and the decreasing is knitting two stitches together. And that's the easy part. We're just gonna go, we're gonna find the, the first two stitches and we're gonna go through both of them at the same time, through, again through that right leg. And we'll just make the new stitch on our needle. And then we'll knit the rest of them till the marker. We move the marker and then we knit again the two stitches together, going through the both of the stitches, grabbing our working yarn, and that's it. And then I'll straighten my needles again, and I'll keep knitting till the next marker. I also wanted to show how I accidentally dropped a stitch, and that's how a dropped stitch looks. And then I will just fix it with my crochet hook. I will go and grab that loop and put it back on my needle again, ready to finish it. So back at the beginning of the round, I'm moving my beginning marker and I will be decreasing again. But this time I want my stitch not to be twisted because if I go through here, that, st that second stitch, stitch will be the front of the stitches, but I want all my stitches to look just like this. So I will twist the first stitch so that makes that little tunnel facing this way. And the, I'll be going through that front stitch and then I'll be grabbing the back one as well to decrease. And now that stitch looks just like the rest of them and the second stitch is hiding behind. And I'll continue doing just knitting till I reach the next marker again. And I'm moving my marker and I have to do the same thing. I will untwist my stitch, then I'll go through it and then grab my second stitch and then I'll decrease. But even if you don't do it, you'll just have different different stitch that's just gonna look different, but it's just gonna be working just fine. It whatever effect you want you want to achieve, that's how you manipulate your stitches. So let's go to the next stitch marker. Move your stitch marker on the next side, and then untwist your stitch and then knit it through the back. So you'll be able to grab the second stitch as well. All right. And we'll keep going till we have only two stitches left between the markers, two or three stitches, depending how tall you want to go. And, and I'll meet you there when it's time to finish the heft. So once those stitches are getting less and less and that circumference here is getting smaller and smaller you have to manipulate your needles as well so you're just going to have to find the middle over here and then draw the cable of your knitting needles just enough so you can slide the front through almost to the tip and then the back needle you'll have enough space to move it and then grab your stitch markers and stitches from the front needle so here I'm going here, making sure you don't have uh, the leather effect here. Moving my marker and then I'm decreasing. I'm going strong here. I have another few stitches to decrease till I can pull and close the top of my hat. So I reached at the point where I have only three stitches between each marker and I'm ready just to close the top of my hat. And you can either at this point cut your yarn off and use to thread all these stitches, their live stitches, making sure you don't drop anything, and just close the top, or we can just cast off at this point. And you can either do it with your knitting needles or with your crochet hook, and I'll show you both. So we'll use again, we'll untwist, we'll slip that stitch and untwist it, and we'll decrease here those first two stitches and then we'll put that stitch back onto the hook and then we'll grab again two stitches at the same time 
and I'll drop my marker here and I'll put my stitch back and here I can use my crochet hook so I'll grab the two stitches and I'll draw a loop and I'll put that loop back onto the needle so I can grab, grab the next stitch with the loop that I just did. I'm just grabbing it from the back because my yarn is coming from the back and putting it back there. And this is how it starts looking. And it looks like this no matter if you use a crochet hook or a knitting needle. So just go ahead the way it makes it easier for you to cast off those stitches. Make sure you pull so you don't have those stitches too big. Just enough to have your crochet hook go through both of them. And this is the hole you have. And then with your crochet hook, just go through the stitches. Get your yarn through them, the tail. And you're just going to pull it through all of those stitches. And you're just going to close the gap. I think that's a very easy way for a crocheter that never knit to try knitting and to combine both of their the skills into creating something with a different look you can have a crochet and knit look in one project and i look and i think they look great it's my favorite when i can combine both of my skills into creating something that's a little different and there once you close that gap really well and you pull it through the inside of your hat and here it is just find a little loop on the side maybe you can even use a smaller crochet hook and then do a chain so you can secure that pull you just did or use a needle to really really weave in that end i hope that those crocheters that never knitted can give it a try and they can knit and crochet in one project even if you've never done knitting i think that's a one way of doing it since you only knit without knowing how to purl because we are going in around this brim just steals the show i hope you enjoyed that tutorial there'll be helpful links in the description below and i'll really appreciate it if you use those affiliate links there and watch the next video of another knit and crochet project together of a cardigan and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Bye!